Hello, coffee lover. Welcome back to another edition of Coffee Truth. I'm your host, Pat Kopi, and this video is about roast profiles and fluid bed roasting. So I want to share an experience that I recently had that demonstrates what I believe is the ineffectiveness of roast profiles, particularly as it pertains to fluid bed roasting. Fluid bed roasting is roasting coffee with electricity and hot air, as opposed to drum roasting, which uses propane as its heat source. So the fluid bed roasting is a much cleaner process. Uh, I believe it's a much better process. But uh, let's talk about roast profiles for a minute. So we were in China, Raymond, my partner and I, uh, in the Kickstarter campaign, creating our power roaster machine. And in China, we are making the internal parts of it. That's the heating and fan assemblies for our power roaster. And we were testing at certain wattages and certain voltages to satisfy the customers that we have all over the world. Each country has a unique voltage. Not each country has a unique voltage, but there are three main voltages, 230 volts, 120 volts, and 100 volts. So we had to take our machine and put it through the test of each of those voltages and also match up the wattages in order to get our desired outcome, which was 120 grams roasted in six minutes. And it's very important that the user has the ability to control the roast from a light roast all the way to a dark roast. So it can't be too fast, it can't be too slow. So we were in China and we tested this. We, for a week, we went through many kilos of coffee testing the machine, the roasting in each of those voltages until we were satisfied and it was completed. After that, we took two, two machines. Ray took one to Singapore and I took one back to Bali, Indonesia, where I am, and we started using it. Well, Ray found out in Singapore that all of a sudden his machine was roasting way too fast. It was done in about four minutes. And I had the opposite uh, true. My roast took about seven minutes, a little bit longer. So the only conclusion that we could come up with was the electricity is different in each country and is delivered in a different way. Now here in Indonesia, I know the electricity is up and down quite a bit and I use a voltage regulator in order to maintain a 220 volt even consistent uh, source. Uh, but in uh, Singapore, Ray's using 230 volts and it's roasting way too fast. So what is happening? So after checking, rechecking everything, the only conclusion that we could come up with is the electricity source is different in each of those countries, in China, in Singapore, in Indonesia, and it's going to be a little bit different in each of the other countries in the US, in Canada, in Europe, it's all going to be a little bit different. So how, do, how then do we figure that a roast profile, what works for somebody as far as heat, temperature, voltage, can, all these controls in one country, how do we duplicate that in a different country? Well, my opinion is it's impossible. It cannot be done. If you're hooking your roast machine up to a computer and trying to copy somebody's roast profile, I do not think it's going to work. And I would like to hear from those of you who have tried that. Have you had success? Have you had failures? What is the story with that? How is that working for you? Because just in this one demonstration between these three countries, China, Singapore, and Indonesia, we got vastly different results. And this is why we don't put extra controls on our power roaster. It's a simple on-off switch because the source, the electricity source from each of those countries are going to be a little bit different. So the user has to determine when to stop the roast. So as far as Singapore is concerned, it's too fast. So we figure we have to come up with a solution for that. We might may have to either make a special machine which has maybe uh, reduced the wattage for our Singapore customers or come up 
with a voltage regulator where we can dial down the voltage uh, to let's say 75% so we can lengthen the row so the user has enough time to stop it. But that's our goal. The user must have enough time to stop the roast and achieve the different roasts from light all the way to dark. So just wanted to share that experience. I thought it was really very enlightening and points out the fickleness of coffee. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but every time I make coffee, it's always a little bit different. And I'm using the same equipment, I'm using the same beans, maybe even the same roast. And what I get is a little bit different result every time. The ambient temperature, the barometric pressure is different. So those are all factors that are going to affect it. Um, and uh, I just notice that this coffee is so fickle and it seems like it's new every single time I get a little bit different results. So I'd love to hear from those of you who watch my channel and have experience with uh, roasting and making your own coffee. What are you seeing? You know, am, am I the only one uh, coming up with this conclusion? It seems so because everyone's talking about roast profiles and swapping computer programs and such. And uh, I just don't think it works. It hasn't worked for me and um, I think that it's probably not working for a lot of people, but maybe you're just a little bit too shy to come out and say, hey, this roast profile isn't working. And maybe it's not something that you're doing that's wrong, but maybe it's some something, a parameter that uh, we haven't really figured out because who knows what actually the amount of electricity that's coming through that wall socket. Who knows exactly what it is and if it's consistent every day. Maybe it changes from day to day. I don't know. But that may be a possibility. Okay, coffee lover, thanks for watching this video. And uh, we'll see you again next time.